excited about this brand new project. It's a mallet that, that I have experimented with for many years, as in fact inspired by mallets that were done before. I can by no means take credit for being the person who is bringing to marimba playing the multi-tone mallet. 30 to 50 years ago, we saw the very first experiments with multi-tonal mallets come from Japan, and then absolutely extraordinary sticks made in New York City 30 years ago by some of the gentlemen who preceded me and who had the idea of a mallet that could change color of sound long before I ever made mallets. So this is my version of them. It's by no means my invention. It is actual repertoire and the needs of repertoire that, that drive us to go design new and different products because we're asked by composers to enrich and enlarge what we have to do as artists. The sophistication of the modern marimba repertoire has asked many new things of the player, but above all, what it's asked is timbral flexibility from the player. We need to be able to say more on a color level than we've ever had to say before. Thusly, the conception of these brand new mallets. The main difference between these mallets and the previous line of mallets is that they are multitonal rather than monotonal. In the previous set of mallets that I did for Vic Firth, these mallets are meant to stay basically the same color of sound as the dynamic changes. These mallets are meant to do the opposite. It allows the player, as we move through a dynamic range, to be able to change the actual color of the sound. So, mallet will be able to start sort of dark and rich like this. And as we come up the dynamic range, the brightness comes. turns to dark. I want a mallet as a player that allows me to say what my Im musical imagination hears. I don't want the mallet to actually box me in and decide the color of sound for me. These brand new mallets allow me to hear a sound in my ear and be able to find whatever that color is that I'm imagining in the same mallet. Rather than try to make my art form conform to my gear, that I want to build gear that conforms to the artistic needs of my repertoire. So for that, we need mallets that are able to say more than mallets were ever able to say before. A mallet that if, if the player is, is imagining a dark and warm color, that that can kick in. And then, and then if the, the music contrasts to a very bright and alive color, that doesn't mean a, a return trip to your stick tray for another mallet. That just simply means utilizing the mallet in a different way and a brand new color comes. Art and the needs of composers and pieces should drive the design of products rather than have products designed that are then shown to composers. For any player to really get the maximum out of their mallets, they need to know how these mallets are made, how they're conceived, and how they're put together. In a monotonal mallet, the construction is very simple. But in a multitonal mallet like this, the construction is slightly more complex. And I'd like to share with you sort of what's underneath here so the player can get, begin to get an idea of how we would use it to its maximum. Inside, the core is as hard as a xylophone core. So the inner, inner portion of the mallet and its maximum capacity of sound and, and brightness are a literal xylophone core. Now, protecting that core are various layers in different models of the mallet of sheathing of, of rubber tubing. In this particular model, it's only a single layer. So on top of that, a multi-step wrapping comes on top where you have tight to medium to loose wraps. So the player has at his or her disposition various layers of cushioning to protect that very bright core. And in all six models, they start out with exactly the same bright xylophone core. So the first thing that the player is touching is pure yarn. Little bit by little bit, we move through, and now we're contacting the rubber band, which is on the outside. And as we crush that, the xylophone core emerges. So this is the entire collection of mallets unwrapped. So we can see, we start from this very big layer of protection 
that doesn't allow that bright xylophone core to come through very quickly at all in a, one, in a 121. Through the 122, 123s, 24s, 25s, and 26s. To be able to use a mallet, you have to know how it's made. One of the things I'd like to share with you as I share these brand new sticks is to show you sort of like a fan, if you will, the color spectrum of each of the six mallets. And so I'll start by playing pianissimo chords, moving up to fortissimo and back, and you'll see in each particular model the way that it shifts color. This is the 121. <laughs> M122. The M123. M124. The M125. In the design of this line of mallets, as you can see by looking carefully at the mallet head, there is a region of the mallet which is what I call the yarn bank. So the core itself lies here between my thumbs, and that's where the centered focus sound is. But once in a while, a player wants to play the equivalent of, of flotando on a violin, and to be able to make the sound just effervescent and sort of without any weight. To do that, all we have to do is to move the hand upward, <clears throat> So instead of playing the mallet just flat in its core, we move the hand upward a bit, and then we're only playing on yarn, a place where core is not. So I'll show you a section where I begin up in the yarn bank. The sound is very wispy and effervescent. As I crescendo, I lay the mallet more and more flat. You know, it was really with Minoru Miki's writing of Time for Marimba in the late 1960s that this sort of mallet became necessary. And the extremes that he asks of the mallet maker for this piece are much akin to the extremes that he asks for the, from the player. Very beginning of this piece, I hold my mallet up very high, playing only on the yarn bank. giving this beautiful, mysterious sound in the beginning. Then he begins to unfold the piece, and the sound has to begin to unfold from the mallet, too. Now the mallet has to become more flexible as the music becomes more flexible. 
Then, as he goes forward for the very first time, then later in, later in the second page, sort of anger and a bigness to the sound are asked. So that same mallet that had to do this at the beginning also has to now do this. And that same mallet later then that had to open the piece with that dark, wonderful, rich color has to go the whole way to the upper extreme of the instrument and play a fortississimo roll, roll on a high C. What an extraordinary range Menor Miki asks for his piece. We had to have mallets that would be able to respond to that artistically. <laughs> 